It's mailbag time here on Chicago Bears Now. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, youtube.com slash bears now, so you don't miss any of our videos on the channel. And hey, if you want to be a part of these mailbags, you got to subscribe and join us every single Tuesday. We'll catch up on some super chats to kick things off. Let's go to Cameron263. Do we need to cut anyone to be able to sign Morgan Moses, or do we have enough room right now to get a deal done? Uh, the answer is it depends how much Moses wants and how much he would get. Uh, I believe the Bears have about five or six million, so if he comes in less than that, you're good to go. You could also do the uh, – it's a one-year deal, but he's got voidable years, so his cap hit is lower this year, but then he's got some dead cap money next year for the Bears. So you could do that, where it's he's making, you know, uh, $5 million bucks, but it only counts $3 million against the cap. You could do something like that. We'll wait and see. I'm still interested in Moses, but uh, at this point in time, we just simply uh, uh, don't know what he's going to do yet. Pump YT is Sean Desai, a good defensive coordinator. He's coached zero games as a DC, so... Uh, for me to say good or bad would be uh, would be uh, an unfair air, fair answer. This is his first year doing it. Uh, I'm optimistic. I think he'll bring new energy. And either way, it was time uh, for Chuck Pagano to move on. Keep it going here. Hashtag Bears, or you can super chat to get your questions on the show. I certainly hope the size is a good DC. Vinny Gomes here. Should the Bears give Akeem Hicks a contract extension? So there's been some chatter about Hicks this year. What do you do with him? Obviously, last year of his contract, you could cut or trade him to clear like $10 million in cap space. You could restructure his deal to lower his cap hit this year. You could also sign him to an extension, two- or three-year extension. Lowers his cap this year, keeps him in with the Bears long term. It's a win-win for everyone involved. I like Akeem Hicks quite a bit. He was still good last year despite dealing with some injuries. Had 49 tackles, three and a half sacks, nine TFLs, uh, even had a pass breakup as well. He's good against the run, and we all know what his value is uh, as a culture guy. Great in the locker room, leader on the field, off the field, all that good stuff. Great in the Chicago community. Akeem Hicks is one of the faces of the Chicago Bears. So to not keep him long-term would certainly be a tough decision, but you got to factor in. Injuries have, uh, have caught up to him a little bit. He's getting a little bit older as well. And as always, money does factor into these decisions. So we will wait and see. I would have to guess that Akeem Hicks, they'll play this season out, and then they'll decide next offseason what to do with him. Will he be a bear after this season? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Get your votes in on this one. Will Akeem Hicks be with the Chicago Bears after this season? If I had to guess, gosh, I'll, I'll lean yes, but I think it's really 50-50. I think it depends on how he plays this year. If he can stay healthy and be productive, then I could see like a one- or two-year deal after this season, but he's on the wrong side of 30, so you never really know. Cut your hair from... W-T-I-H-V-S-S-T-I-C-B-H-D, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the plan is to get a haircut this week. It's time. I'm with you. Uh, the wife likes it long, but uh, it's getting hot outside, so uh, I'm going to get a haircut. Cameras were on. If Robert Quinn doesn't work, who will be the starting right outside linebacker? I mean, you signed Jeremiah Tacho, who is certainly an option. Uh, a deep, dark uh, sleeper guy is Charles Snowden, the UDFA out of Virginia. I like him. I think he makes this 53-man roster. You drafted Travis Gibson last year. He's certainly an option. Uh, you don't have a ton of options, though. So, I mean, really, you hope Quinn works out. I mean, you paid him $70 million bucks, $30 million guaranteed, which, regardless, that's a bad contract. But hopefully, he at least resembles somewhat of that contract. We are sponsored by the Newsbreak app on today's show. And hey, we're having a challenge this month in the month of June here at Chat Sports of downloads per channel. Download the Newsbreak app today by using our Bears link, chatsports.com slash bearsnb. We're in third place right now. We're doing okay. I want to I win this thing. I mean, the Raiders report is crushing it right now at 43 downloads. The Chiefs report is at 28. We're at 20 here on Chicago Bears now. Cowboys report at 13, Dolphins today at 12. Uh, what You're asking why. why. Why would I download the new, Newsbreak app? A couple reasons. Number one, I want to win, which means you guys win, so that's great. Number two, the Newsbreak app is also a good app. You can keep up with local news updates. 
uh, storylines in your neighborhood, sports uh, content as well, politics, uh, food reviews, all types of stuff. It's all aggregated onto one feed on your phone, and somehow I turned my light on on my phone. I don't know how I did that. Chatsports.com slash BearsNB. Support the show. Let's win this thing. Uh, and by the way, you got you got to do it on your phone. So insert that link on your phone, chatsports.com slash bearsnb. Download the Newsbreak app today. That link will redirect you to the app store, and you can download right there. Mary Eli, do you think the Bears as a franchise is heading in the right direction? I feel optimistic. Look, before the Fields pick, it felt like this team was stuck in the mud. Like, they're good enough to be competitive, but they're not good enough to compete at a high level. Fields changes things. If you hit on Fields, you're a major contender because – even though some of your pieces defensively are getting older, I still think you have enough uh, pieces there. And this franchise has always been good defensively, so I trust that that will continue. And I think you're starting to rebuild this offensive line in the right way as well. So if you can block and you got a good quarterback, hey, you can patchwork the rest of the stuff. You keep Allen Robinson long-term, Darnell Mooney and David Montgomery are good young players on offense. I like the potential of this team, but you're still in the potential phase. Like, the Chiefs, for example, they know they're going to be good for a long time. The Bears aren't there yet, but they could certainly get to that level if Fields ends up being a connection. Tommy Gunn, appreciate the super. What's your biggest concern for this season? <sighs> Cornerback and uh, Tevin Jenkins at left tackle. I think he could certainly work there, but that doesn't mean I'm not a little bit nervous. I, You know, he didn't play a ton of left tackle in college. That's a bit of a leap for the Bears to – to make that move to put him over there. So a couple of concerns. I, I think you're I think true font worries me. I don't you know, I've been clear on that. I have major questions about that over there, which is why I would sign another corner. And then offensive tackle as a whole, really. I do think if you put Jenkins at right tackle, he'd be fine regardless. Uh, still like his chances at left tackle. I just think there's gonna be a bit more of a learning curve. After that, you know, obviously uh what does quarterback look like? Uh you know, when does Fields get in there? Does he perform well when he does get in there? So a lot of things to watch out for this year, but two biggest concerns are certainly uh, cornerback and offensive tackle. Brandon Hoyt, uh, would you rather have Taylor Gabriel or Anthony Miller? I think Gabriel officially retired. I'm pretty sure on that. Um, Anthony Miller is uh, younger. He's faster. Probably Miller. I, that's not saying a lot. Gabriel had too many injuries. That's why he had to retire. So uh, he was good when he was here. He was great with the Falcons. But at this point in time, Miller, Pete Gabriel, certainly. But uh, that's years ago at this point. Question for you guys. Do you remember when you subscribed to Bears Now? Obviously, this only subs uh, applies to subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. And then you can say, today. I sub today. But, uh... Let me know how many – a good way to remember is, do you remember how many subs we had when you did subscribe? That's kind of a good measuring stick. I had a guy message me the other day, been here since 400 subscribers, and I was like, wow, that was like mid-January of last year. That's, that's pretty impressive. Obviously, I encourage anybody to subscribe to us here on the channel, and you can just type today, hey, sub today, whatever – uh, the case may be, uh, but uh, let me know if you guys can remember when you did subscribe, and uh, I'll be reading the comments, and I'll read a couple live. Someone says literally a week ago, so Tamber says 2020, so he's been subbed for a while. Uh, appreciate you guys. Joel says start of 2020. That's when we launched. January 7th, 2020 was our first video, so uh, that's quite a long time. Appreciate you guys for uh, supporting the show. Subscribe if you haven't already, because hey, we are the fastest growing Bears channel on YouTube, and uh, you don't want to miss this ride because uh, this train, it's leaving the station, so don't miss it. Pat Rick, do you think there's a big concern with Dalton and interceptions, and do you think that'll be the reason he'll be benched? I think the reason he'll be benched is because Justin Fields is ready. Obviously, if Dalton goes out there the first two weeks and throws six picks, then you can't keep him in there, uh, so that could be an option, and Dalton has been known to uh, kind of be a streaky guy. You know, he'll have four TDs one game and then three picks the next. So he's kind of hot and cold. So could happen. But I think when he gets benched, it's more of, hey, it's, it's time to get Justin Fields in there. Icy Fire 48. We've got a few more here. How much would you love if Jordan Love was mediocre for years and Justin Fields was a superstar? Obviously, that would be fantastic. The Bears or the Packers have gone – what, 30 years with two all-time quarterbacks with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers? 
and the Bears in that t same time frame have probably gone through a dozen quarterbacks. The Bears deserve to have a superstar quarterback, damn it. It's never happened. Come on. Justin Fields has to be the guy. The Packers deserve a little bit of suffering with uh, some quarterbacks here. So, uh, yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic. We'll answer a couple more, but if we do miss your question, just follow me on Twitter, at HGramNFL. The DMs are open. You can also just tweet at me uh, after you follow, and uh, uh, we will uh, answer as many questions as we can. Hashtag Bears if you want to really stand out, but I answer as many as I can on Twitter as well. Uh, we can't get to every question here on our live shows, but uh, if we miss them, just tweet at me uh, and also give me a follow at HGramNFL. Jacob Tuiana, are you and Bears Now community planning on attending any games this season? I don't know. Are we going to any games this year, boys? I don't know. Hopefully. I'd like. Who's giving me a thumbs up? You are? I'm getting a thumbs down, thumbs up. Are we going to any games this year? Probably not. Uh, I'm getting a mixed bag from the bosses here. So uh, here's here's what I can promise you: we will do live watch parties. I can't say with 100% certainty every week, but I'm guessing just about every week. Uh, so if I'm not in attendance there, I'll be live on YouTube. So hey, it's it's a win-win for you guys. Paris Howard, fire pace and higher Riddick. Uh, I kind of thought the fire pace thing sl slowed down a little bit. Hey, I still think Lewis Riddick's a good mind. I think. He deserves an opportunity. Uh, Mike Mayock in with Vegas uh, went from TV to GM, and he's had a mixed bag. So uh, if he ends up getting fired and doesn't work out, that hurts Lewis Riddick's chances, I think. Uh, pace is safe for now, but that doesn't mean I'm completely off the fire pace train. I certainly have quieted down, but uh, this draft was definitely uh, redeemable for sure. Adam White, give us a bold prediction for the Bears this season. Oh, you're going to put me on the spot here. Bold prediction. I don't want to do the obvious, like Justin Fields, whatever. Darnell Mooney will have over 1,000 yards this year. How about that? I don't know if that's super bold, but I think he's going to take off. I think he's an electric playmaker. Darnell Mooney will be a 1,000-yard receiver this season. That is my bold prediction. And by the way, we might do a bold predictions video. You just sparked something for me, Adam. So, uh, good question there. What are... What's one thing you expect to improve with Desai coming in outside of Bojack's bounce back? Look, he certainly learned a lot from Pagano, but something he has to do, in my opinion, is dial up more blitzes. You can't do the drop seven, blitz four every time, which was a Chuck Pagano special. Sometimes you have to bring pressure. Sometimes you have to drop nine. You got to give more looks to opposing teams because these, these offenses are just too good these days. So mix it up, blitz from time to time, you know, play heavy coverage from time to time. Don't just sit in your base defense 90% of the time. 